I'm at the place that I've been staying for the last week here with my girlfriend in Yalapa and today I wanted to just talk to you guys about some of the challenges that I see with growing in the tropics. You know a lot of people in North America think that uh, you know we just go to the tropics and we, and we can grow year-round because it's you know it's warm and, and it, it's just it's so simple because you can just put stuff on the ground and you know you don't have to worry about frost and all this but this is not the case growing in the tropics is full of challenges and I'm going to talk about some of those challenges and kind of give you guys a little tour of what I see around here it's pretty cool what they're what they're doing on this piece of property so Jeff the owner here has uh, built some raised beds hoping to get some vegetable production going on I don't think he has much in here right now obviously there's not much there but you know raised beds in a tropical climate are a pretty pretty good thing to have especially you know this in, in this area we're the, sort of the near the Puerto Vallarta Peninsula and uh, or Bay I should say it's not a peninsula and there's a ton of rainfall here um, I forget what it is off the top of my head but it's a lot and a raised bed in this context is a really good thing because you want that drainage. You want to keep your soil a little bit drier. And they've done a pretty neat thing with their raised beds here is they built them out of bottles. One of the things that's really challenging here in Yalapa is, is access to materials. The only way to access this place is by the water. So bringing in lumber, and any other kind of building materials is costly. So a lot of people here are just reusing materials that are available locally. And so since there's a, lot, a decent amount of tourism here, they got lots of bottles. So Jeff's done a lot of concrete with bottles, similar to what, what um, Michael Reynolds does with earth ships. You know, kind of just concrete and bottles together to make walls. And, and they've done the same thing with the raised beds here. So, you know, it's challenging growing vegetables in a tropical climate. There are some vegetables that I've learned from coming down here for as many years as I have that I see more commonly. So, root veg is pretty good. You can grow radishes, carrots, okay. Um, beets, people grow beets down here. Um, yams and sweet potato, those are pretty popular. Traditional veggies that I've seen down here. There's a long history of the, the the three sisters. The three sisters garden is a is a very is a Native American, North American, even South American tradition, where you grow corn, beans, and squash together, and they're sort of interplanted. The squash shades out the ground. The corn grows tall, and then they grow the pole beans up the corn. So it's sort of a a companion planting. One of the original companion planting crops you can do. So. A lot of people do the corn, beans, and squash. You can grow things like peppers, tomatoes do okay down here, but a lot of the salad greens, like things that I grow, don't do very well in the tropics. Lettuce is really tough to do down here, um, but things that are more in the brassica family, I'm seeing growers down here do. So arugula, mustard greens, kale does all right, collard greens, those things do well, but it's, it's tricky to do the high density greens um, in the way that I do them in Canada, but I have seen growers down here do high density on 30 inch greens, um, but anything but lettuce really. Lettuce is the hardest thing to do. And a lot of the lettuce farmers I've seen down here are just growing hydroponics because there is a, a lot of soil has like bad nematodes down here. so. You, they just these nematodes just eat away at the roots and so a lot of growers that are doing crops like that are doing them soilless in some kind of medium outside of the soil and and if they're doing it in soil too I see a lot of growers growing in pots I met a woman at a farmers market in Sayulita last time I was here who had a quarter acre farm in pots that she was doing so that's a that's a lot of pots the tropics are really all about growing the perennials so Jeff at his place here has planted all kinds of perennial fruit. He's got, uh, this is passion fruit. He's got star fruit. He's got kefir limes. Got some uh, papayas coming along here. You really gotta plant the perennials in a tropical climate because it's what naturally grows well. Um, one thing that I've seen a lot of down here is moringa. Moringa is a superfood. It's a, it's a green that you grow. I'm trying to find a moringa plant, but I can't find one. Um, and it's, you know, it's just a super nutritionally dense green. It has little leaves that you eat. And uh, Jeff actually made us a juice with moringa and star fruit and just fruit that's literally falling off all these trees here. Incredible stuff. 
So it's really all about the perennials. One of the, the challenges in a high rainfall climate like this too with annual vegetables is you just get so much rain that that can cause fungus on your soil leading to bad germination or diseased crops. And that's one of the things that's really challenging about a tropical climate is when you don't get a freeze, you get soil disease and pests that don't really go away seasonally. This is the hugest advantage that we have in the northern and southern, further southern hemispheres, the cold climates, I should say, is that we get that reset every year where the, the cold comes in and it kills off the disease and pests and you can start fresh next year. And I think that's why annual based agriculture has really become a, the majority of our diet in North America is because of that is, is it lends itself well to growing annuals when you have that reset. This is a kefir lime Jeff's got here. This, this tree is more used for the leaves and even the rind of the lime. The lime doesn't juice in the same way that, that normal limes do. But he's got lots of these perennial fruits around here. I don't even think I've discovered all of them, but star fruit, lime, passion fruit, He's got some kind of berry down there called uh, Paradiso. Um, it's it's a long ways off, but you know, down in these climates, that's that's really what a big chunk of your diet is going to be is growing perennials, because they just naturally do better here. Trying to come down here and force growing some kind of annuals that are more accustomed to growing in northern regions. It's just not going to work. You're just going to constantly be fighting nature and then that's, that's where you, people are spraying all the chemicals and stuff like that. So, you know, you're better off just adapting to what your environment is going to give you with the least amount of problems. Behind me here, you can see they're starting to put in a greenhouse. And the greenhouse in this climate is, has nothing to do with keeping things warm. It just has everything to do with keeping the rain off. So it's some sort of Agribon Rime fabric, or it's more like an insect netting along the sides. So it's breathable, and then he's going to put a roof in on it, and that's just to keep the, the rainy season rain off so you can actually grow vegetables. But again, what you can actually grow for vegetables down here is very limited based on the pests and the disease and just the extreme heats that you'll get during the, the warmer parts of the year. Having said that, it's pretty much warm year round here. So anyways, I just thought I'd give you guys a little update on what I'm doing here, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.